Have you guys ever been to a Chinese restaurant? And you know, when you go to a Chinese restaurant, you get a fortune cookie. And if you open up your fortune cookie in here, you have a little piece of paper. And it gives you your fortune. Let's see. It tells you how to speak Chinese. Okay, this one tells you how to say July. And I can't read Chinese, so I can't tell you. Uh, I think it's Jiwei. That's July in Chinese. And it tells you your lottery numbers. So you can play these lottery numbers and, and get rich, right? <laughs> right? It works, doesn't it? No? And all the time. And then it gives you your fortune. Now this one says, you know, by golly, you're a handsome man. So if you play these lottery numbers, you'll be a rich, handsome man. Is that right? Yeah. No, it says, don't play for safety. It's the most dangerous thing in the world. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I have no idea. Okay, so, do you think that this is true? That, that this is really my fortune? You don't have any idea, do you? But you know, when you, when you read in the Bible, sometimes we read things that sounds like it's our fortune. You know, that, 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 that somebody is telling the future for us. And that's really not the way that we're supposed to read that. What we read that is that it tells us who God is. And it tells us what God promises for us. And so rather than, than some prescription for what's going to happen in the future, it gives us an idea of what God is promising for us, often right now. And that's what we want to remember, that it isn't about what the future holds for us, but who holds our future. Okay? So let's pray a little word of prayer. Give me your hands. Addy, you want to get a hand here? Okay. You're the one that you get that in your mouth. <laughs> Lord, we bless these children and help them remember that you hold their future in your hands through your promises through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay. It's a fortune cookie. It's like you have a fortune cookie. Worshiping with us at Open Park again and yet, here at Kingdom of Christ the Jerry Church. Let us turn our hearts and minds to God and ask for the illumination of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> God, our source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out upon us the spirit of wisdom and understanding that being taught by you in Holy Scripture. Our hearts and minds may be open to know the things that pertain to life and the holiness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The scripture passage today is from Isaiah chapter 65, verses 17 through 25. The heading is New Heavens and a New Earth. See, I will create a new heaven and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight, 
and its people the joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard no more. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. The one who dies at a hundred will be held up as a mere child. The one who fails to reach a hundred will be considered a curse. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen my chosen ones will long enjoy the work of their hands. They will not labor in vain, nor, they will, nor will they bear children doomed to misfortune. For they will be a people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like an ox and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountains, says the Lord. The word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Beware that you are not led astray, 
For, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earth earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed, even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God speaks through the prophet, for I am about 
to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. This was certainly a momentous time in the history of Israel. In 538 BCE, the Israelites were allowed to return from exile after King Cyrus of Persia took control of the Babylonian Empire. But few chose to return, and those who did faced nearly insurmountable obstacles. Economic and social conditions were difficult, and they began to turn away from God once again. You see, the prophets had, had all promised a new day and this glorious future after the exile. This was to be the restoration of the Davidic kingdom. But 20 years had passed, and the city of Jerusalem was still in ruins, and the, the temple was still a burned-out hulk, and the people were on the verge of despair. They were ready to give up on God because God had not done what they had expected. The people didn't see their God working in their world. So the old habits of Baal worship and the worship of the new gods of Babylon began to creep into their community. This, there was a, a spirit of cynicism enshrouding the people and their leaders. The law served no purpose. Religious practices were worthless. God had not responded. We get a sense of the timeless themes that are applicable today as anxiety over the things of this world blinds us to what God is doing right here and right now in our own neighborhood. But the prophet reassured the people that God had not forgotten them and that God still held their future. He chastised them for their apathy and lack of concern for other people. He called for them to turn back to God, to care for the things God cares about. And for God's promise to rejoice in Jerusalem and to delight in God's people. Now we are often of a mind that this new heaven and new earth talk is our fortune cookie. It's all about the end of the world. You know, about the apocalyptic things. And so we sit in our sanctuary here, staring anxiously out the stained glass windows at all the momentous problems out in the world while we're waiting for Christ to return and to set things straight. But this isn't about that. This is about the eternal kingdom of God right here and right now. This is about the God who heard the cries of oppressed slaves in Egypt, who established God's law for humanity that put righteousness and justice at the center of our lives, who chose to reveal God's self in our world, through a particular people, people to whom God showed grace and forgiveness, not because they deserved it more than anyone else, but because God called them to be a blessing to all the nations and families of the earth, the God who calls us to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. This is but a glimpse. It is an image seen through a mirror dimly, as 
the Apostle Paul put it. It's a glimpse of what we will be, or what it will be like to live in a world and to be a people restored to a right relationship with God. How or when God does this is not important. You see, our faith is in, God, is in God and in God's promises and not in any assumptions that we have about what the future holds. This is perhaps what Jesus was getting at when he spoke about the things to come. The temple in, in Jerusalem. You know, ironically, this is a symbol of, the, of human power structures the temple. He said that not one stone would be left upon another. There would, there would be false prophets. There would be wars, insurrections, nations against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms, earthquakes, famines, plagues, and signs in the heavens. There would be arrests, persecutions, imprisonments, betrayals, hatred, and death. His disciples must have marveled at these words. But for us to really understand, we have to realize that by the time Luke wrote these things down, the temple had already been destroyed. People had already come saying, I am He, and the time is near. And there had already been an insurrection. Israel had risen risen up against Rome and had been utterly crushed. Christians were already being arrested and persecuted. They were already being brought before kings and governors because they confessed the name of Christ. They were already being betrayed by parents and brothers and relatives and friends. They were already being put to death. The last few weeks, we've been following Jesus on his way to Jerusalem. And Jesus is still teaching us how to be disciples down in a world turned upside down. If we take another look at verses 13, 14, and 15, there in, in this passage. Jesus was saying that despite all of these really bad things going on, despite being threatened even with death, make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. Well, that didn't happen, did it? At least not until three centuries later, when Constantine decided that it was cool to be Christian. The person in the early church accused of being a Christian either denied Christ, or was imprisoned, or executed, usually in some grotesquely entertaining way. There are Christians in this world today who still live with this danger. We do not. You know, most people in our culture are not hostile to Christianity. They're just indifferent. You know, and other gods have crept into their communities. So what was Jesus getting at here? He talked about words and a wisdom. Was he wrong? Well, no. You see, there are at least three Greek words that can be translated as word, as in I will give you words and a wisdom. Okay, one is logos. You're familiar with this one. Uh, this is the one that John used at the beginning of the Gospel of John. It says, in the beginning was the word, the logos, and the word was with God and the word was God. Okay, from this Greek word logos, we get our word logic. It has the sense of a 
reasoned argument or an expression of an ideal. This isn't the word that Luke used. Another word for word is the Greek word drama. Okay, this is the word from which we get our word rhetoric. Okay, it's the word we normally would think of when we hear a reference to words. Okay, John used this in John chapter 3. He whom God has sent speaks the words, the Rama of God. But this also isn't the word that Luke used. Luke used the word stoma. For I will give you the stoma and the sophia, the words and the wisdom. The stoma literally means mouth. And it's the word that from which we get our word stomach. So maybe we can think of this, you know, what Jesus is offering us here is kind of a gut check. Okay, it's, it's a way not only of speaking, but a way of living our lives with spiritual wisdom. A way of standing tall that makes possible a bolder testimony of Jesus Christ, even in a world that has been turned upside down. These passages warn us of being too concerned with temporary human power structures. It is Jesus who grounds us in hope for the eternal kingdom of God right here and right now. We will experience the promises of God when we lay down self Centeredness, so that others may experience God's love. And when we sit, set aside our own needs, so that others may have some stability and comfort. And when we give up our human sense of justice, so that others may have peace. God has opened up new heavens and a new earth through Jesus Christ. May we be open to Christ, and through us, may others be blessed in God's kingdom. And may all God's people say, Amen. Amen.